Before you get started here, I just want to let you guys know that this is not a stable build of Android. There are bugs, you will experience problems. If you're looking for a stable build of Android for the Raspberry Pi 3, there is not one. You will have to wait. Maybe in the future somebody will release a stable build that we'll be able to use, but for now, this is what we have. This is a test build. If you want to try it out, go right ahead. In this video, I will be showing you how to install Android 6.0.1 onto your Raspberry Pi, and we'll go over loading Google Play. So if you want to back out, go right ahead. Nobody's going to blame you. You need to use HDMI. You cannot use HDMI to DVI. You cannot use analog video out. And the last build had a few problems displaying on LG televisions. So if you have a black screen on boot, try another monitor or television. We're going to get right into it. So if you are ready, if you're brave enough, let's do this. Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to install the newest Android 6.0.1 on your Raspberry Pi 3. Now this only works on the Raspberry Pi 3. Before we start, I want to let you guys know this is far from stable. This is a very alpha build. It's still going to crash. Some apps aren't going to work. But if you'd like to try it out, I'm giving you a tutorial on how to install it. I will also be going through installing gaps. First, we need to download the image and Win32 Disk Imager. Now we can get that image from geektillithurts.com. Go down here to the WordPress icon and I will leave a link to his YouTube page also. So this is Android on Raspberry Pi 3 CPU and GPU performance update. So it does have a better GPU driver and a better CPU driver. Click on download and you're going to download it from Mediafire. I am not a robot. If you are a robot, I suggest backing out now and do not download. So you can authorize the download and download it. I have already done so and I've placed it on my desktop. It comes zipped, so you will need to unzip it with WinRAR or 7-zip. Next thing we're going to need is Win32 Disk Imager. What this does, it will allow you to flash an image to an SD card or a USB drive. This is go-to software for me when I'm installing anything for the Raspberry Pi on Windows. It's very safe, easy to download, and I'll show you how to use it when we get to it. So just click on this download link and install it. If you don't want to install gaps, you can stop downloading now. If you want gaps, you're going to need ADB Fastboot and drivers. If you do not have ADB installed or Fastboot drivers, I suggest downloading this. It's a 15 second ADB installer for Windows and it works amazing. You can download it here from Google Drive and it comes in a setup EXE so you'll install this. It'll walk you through the steps. And the last thing we're going to need is the system folder I created. Now this is going to come zip. You're going to need to unzip this with WinRAR or 7-zip. But I'll show you how to use all of this when we get to it. All the links for everything I just showed you are in the description. Let's start by unzipping our Android image that we downloaded from Geek Till It Hurts Mediafire. Right click, extract. This could take a second, so I'm just gonna fast forward this video. We're done extracting the file. And inside of here we have a disk image file. It's 7.7 .7 gigabytes. Kinda big coming from the original download size. It can take some time to unzip it. I'm going to move the Android zip out of the way. Now you need to insert your SD card and you need to find the correct drive. My SD card is a 16 gigabyte SanDisk SD card. Nothing special, it's a class 10 and it's not too fast, but you need it formatted. It needs to be clean. So if we go in here, I have nothing inside of this SD card. Go ahead and open up Win32 Disk Imager. 
Now from here, you need to have the correct device chosen. You can find your SD card drive letter here. Mine is drive E. And just make sure that is the drive or the device chosen here. Click on the blue folder icon. Navigate to where you extracted the Android image. Mine is on my desktop. I double click. And I'm going to start to write this to my SD card. This could take a while depending on the speed of your SD card reader, the speed of your SD card, and even the speed of your computer. It will finish. It's going to take a little bit of time, guys, so I'm going to fast forward this. Click write. It will tell you that writing to physical device can corrupt the device. Don't worry about it. SD cards are a dime a dozen. Okay, so the write was successful. This could have taken a long time for you guys. I know it did for me. Flashing and close to eight gigabyte image to an SD card does take a while. What we're gonna do now is take the SD card from our PC and place it into our Raspberry Pi. We're gonna need a keyboard connected to a Raspberry Pi also. A keyboard and mouse, I use a keyboard mouse combo with one dongle. We're gonna boot it up. It's gonna take a little bit to boot up. Then we're gonna install GAPS. We're gonna need to set up Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi running Android, get our IP address, and then come back to the PC. We're going over to the Pi now. So like I said at the beginning of this video, this only works over HDMI and you need a 1080p screen. A lot of people were having issues with the last build with LG TVs and Sony TVs. I'm using a Samsung and I've tested it on a 40 inch, a 32 inch, and my monitor, and they all work great, but these are all Samsung products. Give it a little bit of time, it's gonna take a bit to boot. Okay, now that we're booted up, I have my mouse connected. We're just gonna click on got it. What we need to do is go into our settings, turn on Wi-Fi, and get our IP address, because we're gonna install Google Play services. And you can do that by just going to settings, Wi-Fi, turn Wi-Fi on. I'm gonna connect to my hide your kids, hide your Wi-Fi. We are now connected to Wi-Fi. You can do this over ethernet also. We're gonna scroll down to About Tablet, Status, and right here we have our IP address. So go ahead and write that down if you don't have another screen right beside you to use your computer on. Take a picture of it or remember it. We're going to need this IP address to connect over ADB and transfer our system folder into the Android build. Now our system folder consists of Google Play, Google Play services, and a bunch of other apps that need to be installed in order for Google Play to work. We're gonna go back to the computer now, install our ADB drivers, connect to the Raspberry Pi over ADB, and transfer our system folder. Moving to the PC now. Your PC needs to be connected to the same network that your Raspberry Pi is connected to. We're back at the PC now, and you have your IP address written down, or on the screen next to you, or you took a picture of it. You just need that IP address. First thing you need to do is install the ADB drivers that you downloaded. Now this is a quick 15 second ADB install. Do you want to install ADB and fastboot? Press Y and enter. Install ADB system-wide, Y and enter. Now it's going to ask you if you want to install the device drivers. I already have mine installed. You can install them if you'd like. I'm gonna click no. This is the zipped system file that you downloaded from my Dropbox. We need to extract this. Right click, extract. I'm just gonna move it over here for easy access. 
So inside of here, we'll have another system folder. You need to open this up. And here is the file or the folder that we're going to transfer to our Raspberry Pi 3. This has all of our apps that we're going to install, Google Play services, Google Play, uh, Google Games, all the good Google services that we need for Google Play to run. And I've created a text document. You can open this up in Notepad. These are the commands we're going to need to type in. Now I suggest typing them. You can copy and paste them, but if you do type them, it's better practice for using the command line. What we want to do is come over here to where our system folder that we're going to transfer in the ADB Android gaps text file is. Hold shift on your keyboard and right click. Open command window here. Now from here, we need to connect to our Raspberry Pi. And to do that, we'll type in ADB connect and our IP address. Mine will be different from yours. Press enter. It'll start ADB for us automatically. Now we are connected to our Raspberry Pi. We need to remount the system folder. Remount succeeded. Now we need to push the system folder to our Raspberry Pi. And to do that, ADB, push, system, space, forward slash, system. Press enter. It's going to push this folder to our Raspberry Pi, to the SD card we installed Android on. Give it a little bit of time. It's going to finish. So when the system folder is done pushing, you'll just type in ADB reboot and we can move back to the Raspberry Pi. We, we have the Raspberry Pi rebooting. It needs to initialize the apps that we just installed. Give it a little bit of time. You should get a screen and a little bit saying starting Android and it will go through all of the apps. Now that the Raspberry Pi is successfully booted, you may need to reconnect to your Wi-Fi. You can do that by going here, clicking on this little icon. It will automatically reconnect. Sometimes it disconnects and it will not automatically do it until you go to this screen. Click on your app drawer. And if you followed the steps correctly, you should have the Play Store installed here. We're going to open the Play Store up. It's going to check the info. We'll be able to sign into the Play Store. I'm going to do this really quick. I don't usually automatically back up device data. And we now have access to Google Play. Like you saw in my last video, this is limited Google Play. For some reason, it thinks that the Raspberry Pi is an Android TV. So there's not as many apps as, let's say, an Android phone, but at least we have something right now. So if there's any Android experts out there, please help me out. I've tried edited, editing the build prop uh, to make it think that it's a Nexus 6 or a Nexus 4, but nothing helps. It still shows me only these apps here. So if we want to download YouTube, we get the Android TV version. But this is a step in the right direction, guys. This is really good that we are able to do this. Um, this is the only way that I was able to do it I tried the newest version of Gaps, the Marshmallow Gaps, but I cannot get it to install. It just it crashes every time. So the only way I was able to do this was the way you saw now. It's very it's very alpha. I mean, this is not stable. The build itself is not stable. So if you're expecting a full working version of Android, you need to wait. 
That's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments or any suggestions, please let me know because I have been trying to work with this for a little while. I would like to get the full access to the Marshmallow Gaps. For some reason, I'm not able to. I do not know what it is. I have gone through all of the files trying to find something that I could change to make Google Play think that this is a different device. Now when I edit the build prop and I go to my online browser to my Google Play on a different PC, it shows me that this device is a Nexus 4 or a Nexus 6, whatever I edited the build prop to be, but I'm still only able to gain access to the apps we have on the Play Store here. I hope this helped you out, and if it did, hit that like button and subscribe because I have a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.